I've done Audi, I've done BMW. It only makes sense that the next I would do would be Mercedes. Today I'm going to give you five depreciated Mercedes that all cost less than £35,000, often way less than that. So I think a pretty good value for money considering what you're getting. So let's get straight into it. Let me know in the comments down below which manufacturer you'd like to see next. Hit the like button if you enjoy this kind of video. Subscribe as well if you're new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Let's kick this video off with arguably the best luxury car you can actually buy within our price range. It definitely has to be up there as the flagship Mercedes luxury car, which usually sets the standard for luxury tech within cars. In this case, it's the Mercedes S500L from the W222 generation, with the L of course standing for long wheelbase, meaning you get a little bit of extra legroom in the rear, and the car gets categorized as a limousine. I've been lucky enough to experience quite a few luxury cars recently, and the S-Class is probably the one that feels like it will last the longest. It just feels so well put together, which is interesting when you compare it to my sentiments around a lot of other Mercedes I've driven recently. And it comes with a massive engine too, a 4.7 litre twin turbocharged V8 that produces 448 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.6 seconds, very decent for a car that isn't focused on performance. Now I mentioned luxury spec, one crazy thing with this car was the introduction of magic body control, which literally scans the road surface ahead and modifies the shock damping at each wheel to most smoothly handle bumps so that the ride is as comfortable as possible. Having been in the back of one, it's a whole different level of luxury and most importantly, quality compared to other Mercedes for sure, but also to its main competitors. I like the back of the equivalent BMW 760Li for example, but the S-Class feels even more premium. I love that the interior is like an evolution of previous generations too, rather than a complete overhaul. Older S-Classes can look pretty dated around the dashboards, but somehow the W2 222 took that same concept as the W221 and made it modern. These will run you around £20,000 the bottom end and for our 35k limit you'll be getting a 2016 model with around 40,000 miles on the clock. Though they feel bulletproof they're not without potential issues, many of which are caused by the electricals which makes sense given the tech, though oil leaks from around the turbocharger are also known. Next up we have a car that is only really value for money because of its engine, as one of the last that's actually available with its powertrain within our price range. It's the CL65 AMG which is also the oldest car on the list. That engine is a 6 litre twin turbocharged V12 which makes 603 brake horsepower the most on this list, taking it to 60 in 4.3 seconds which is kind of exactly what you want out of a Grand Tourer. Loads of power but not always the fastest thing on the road, more focused on being comfortable getting up to high speed. That engine is pretty special as the fundamentals of it were also provided to Pagani to be chucked into both the Huayra and the Utopia, so it's a properly exotic engine for the money. This is of course the preface of CL65 as well because I think people in the know about the 65 AMGs of all types have kept the prices very high. The SL65 AMG for example has just gone from strength to strength on price in recent years. What's interesting is that the CL65 is only really a CL600 with more power and some additional performance bits to make it handle better and feel more sporty on the interior. It's not like it's some huge overhaul versus other CLs of the same era as it came just before AMG were responsible for cars from the ground up, instead focusing on modifying existing Mercedes models. So the thinking consumer might buy a CL600 instead, but in reality there's a reason why these cars are so expensive and that AMG badge plus those AMG modifications plus the rarity of the car is what propels it into a different realm. This is a unicorn car of our list then and they're super hard to come by, but I did find one for sale at £31,000 from 2008 with 100k on the clock. Active body control on these has caused the most issues and though some mechanical issues have been reported by some owners, in general owners seem to agree that these have been very reliable engines and transmissions. On to the top 3 now and in 3rd we have the Mercedes E63 AMG from the W212 generation that effectively sits between the C class and S class as an executive car beyond the more sporty C class but not a full size luxury car like the S class. This awkward position that it sits in does something for me though, as in both saloon and estate spec this car is an absolute beast. I don't know why but for me personally it gives much meaner vibes than other Mercedes AMG cars. It's got a pretty mean engine too, a 5.5 litre twin turbocharged V8 that produces 549 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.1 seconds, which is slightly slower than one of its main competitors, the equivalent RS6. Interestingly, on release these didn't get the 5.5 litre, they had the older naturally aspirated 6.2 litre block instead, but in 2011 it was swapped out, though the power remained pretty much the same between the two to begin with. If you got the performance pack however, that's how you got up to the 549 
29 brake horsepower mark. These got a facelift in 2013 and to be honest I couldn't tell you whether I prefer the pre or post facelift. The pre is actually a bit more angular which is nice but you can also tell it's dated compared to current Mercedes design language where the post facelift is a lot closer to the Mercedes styles we see on the roads today. Either way though you get a ridiculous amount of performance in a car built to take on the BMW M5 and if I was personally after one it would probably be the post face of this state in S spec which gives it another 29 brake horsepower and removes the speed limiter letting it do 186 miles per hour. The starter at around £17,000 making it the cheapest car on the list and for 35k we'll be looking at a nice 2015 model with around 25,000 miles on the clock. Generally reliability has been pretty good on them and from what I can see owners saying on forums service costs aren't horrendous either. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. And same as the last two videos, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite ever Mercedes is. For me, that's a really tough one. It's either the 300SL or the CLK GTR. It's a weird day when I have two of the same car from the same generation on one of my lists, but the Mercedes S63 AMG is a very nice car for the money, though of course I'm specifically talking about the coupe rather than the saloon we spoke about previously. What's interesting about this nameplate though is that that the S63 was the first S-Class Coupe since the C126 generation and was actually the successor to the CL63 AMG of the same generation as the CL we spoke about previously. It's also related to the E63 AMG we've just spoken about as it has the same basic 55 liter twin turbocharged V8 engine pushing 576 brake horsepower this time but still getting to 60 in 4.1 seconds though of course as a whole package it serves a totally different purpose to the E63. It took on quite a naughty sounding design language first used on the S500L we spoke about previously, titled Sensual Purity, which Mercedes call a symbiosis of hot and cold, whatever that means. Practically, it means the focus of the car is on both making it an emotional experience and an intelligent one, so you get the enjoyment and pleasure out of driving the car, and the intelligent technology to augment this experience. I assume this bit of marketing came as a response to modern cars becoming increasingly soulless. Applied to this coupe, I definitely get it aesthetically, as it is a great looking car, and then the tech isn't a million miles from the S500L we mentioned as it still has stuff like magic body control. It came with both all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive options and in terms of luxury it's pretty up there for the money compared to other luxury Grand Tourers which is what makes it great value for money. These will run you around our 35k limit at the bottom end though and for that kind of money you'll be getting a 2015 model with 50,000 miles on it. Like the E63 mechanical issues aren't hugely expected but like the S-Class tech ones are. Also some owners suffer jerky gearboxes sometimes needing replacing early in the lives of these cars. Taking the top spot on this list is the Mercedes C63 AMG which of the bunch on this list is probably the one I would personally have. It's the newest car on this and probably the most popular two all in but it's an incredibly good looking car for the money with an insane level of performance that thrusts it to the top of our list. That's thanks to its 4 litre twin turbocharged V8 which makes 469 brake horsepower significantly less than the last three cars we've spoken about but still giving it a list topping 0 to 60 time of 3.9 seconds which is genuinely genuinely pretty rapid. When you break 4 seconds to 60, especially in something rear wheel drive, it's pretty insane. It came as a saloon, convertible and coupe and personally I think the coupe tops the lot as the best looking and the one I would personally consider. One of the best things about these though is that engine sound. As they're a touch older, having hit the market in 2015 they weren't subject to quite as aggressive particulate filters meaning they got to sing a little bit louder. This is obviously a competitor to the M4 but the typical view is that the C63 offers just a bit more comfort without losing the sportiness and madness of being a fast coupe. And though I said it looks good, it also looks a little tamer than the M4 Comp for example in my books. So I think it actually appeals to a slightly wider audience. You can have one of these as both a brash idiot like me or someone more refined too and spec can really affect this too on them. To get into one of these you'll need to spend around 25k at the bottom end and 10k more than that will get your 2017 model with 50,000 miles on the clock. Reliability has generally been okay on them, owners instead complain a little bit about the gearbox hesitating at times or it being overly aggressive in race mode but then that is race mode what do you expect and so there you have it let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do another brand in the future and hit like and subscribe if you haven't already also youtube thinks you'll like the video currently displayed on screen so click on that and i'll see you over there